Before we discuss how salts may or may not affect the pH of a solution, we need to review the conjugate acid-base pairs. So I'm going to start with the strong acid, hydrochloric acid. And this strong acid uh, breaks so that hydrogen's electron goes with chloride. This reaction proceeds all the way to the right. And the chloride ion is in solution as well as the hydrogen ion. So again, this is what makes it a, a solution acidic. But more importantly, we're going to be taking a look at the conjugate base of acids. So a strong acid, like hydrochloric acid, has the chloride ion as its conjugate base. And because the chloride ion is so stable, uh, this reaction does not proceed in the reverse direction. So the conjugate base of a strong acid is very weak. So the conjugate base is very weak. And very weak means it's not going to act like a base when it's in solution. So again, a strong acid, if there's 100% dissociation, that means no equilibrium is established because the reaction proceeds completely to the right, so there are only products present. And this also means that the conjugate base of a strong acid will never react with water to form an intact HCl molecule. And I've written in theory, or on paper, we could have chloride in the presence of water, and it's the conjugate base of hydrochloric acid, so a base could react with water to form the basic hydroxide. So chloride, the base, could pull this proton off of water. In this case, water would be acting like the acid. And if this reaction occurred, this would be the intact HCl. So this is not acidic. An intact molecule uh, would not be acidic. That would just be a nice molecule. And so we're going to be taking a look at salts. And what's going to be very important in determining whether a salt affects the pH, we'll have to have an understanding of the acid-conjugate base relationship or base-conjugate acid relationship. Okay. If we look at a weak base, for example, like hydrofluoric acid, this reaction does set up an equilibrium. Only some of the H, some of the molecule breaks apart to form H plus and the fluoride ion. So again, here is the acid. I'm leaving out the water in the reaction, and this is the conjugate base. So a weak acid will have a stronger conjugate base stronger than the conjugate base of a strong acid. So because fluoride, if fluoride is in the presence of water, which it would be in the form of a salt or in when it's in an equilibrium with hydrofluoric acid, this fluoride could pull a proton off of water and make the intact hydrogen fluoride molecule and leave behind a hydroxide ion. So the conjugate base of a weak acid, this is a base, so it would make a solution basic. The handout that I scanned in, I've made that so that we could make the distinction. The fluoride ion could be in the in, in water from either hydrofluoric acid or lithium fluoride or sodium fluoride. So here, uh, the fluoride ion would result from the dissociation of hydrofluoric acid. But we could also have the fluoride ion if we had a salt, for example, 
sodium fluor or lithium fluoride, which is in toothpaste. This dissolves into the lithium ion plus the fluoride ion. So whether the fluoride ion comes from the acid or whether it comes from a salt, it still behaves as a conjugate base. So we're going to have to make that distinction. So the conjugate base of a weak acid will affect the pH. So I'm going to state that here. The conjugate base of a weak acid will make a solution basic. In other words, it will act like a base. So if we put the salt, lithium fluoride, in pure water, the lithium, we're going to see on a later video, that the lithium will not affect the pH, but the fluoride ion will affect the pH. And so if we look at that sheet that I scanned in, we want to make sure that we recognize an acid versus a salt. So in the handout, I've just listed a few strong acids. Hydrochloric acid will dissociate to leave behind the chloride ion. So the chloride ion is the conjugate base of hydrochloric acid. If we have sodium chloride, we still have the chloride ion, and this is still the conjugate base of hydrochloric acid. So the conjugate base does not have to come from the dissociation of an acid. So remember the definition of a conjugate acid-base pair is they differ by an H+. Nitric acid is another example of a strong acid. It will dissociate into the hydrogen ion and the nitrate ion. So nitrate is the conjugate base of nitric acid. If we have a salt that contains nitrate, for example, sodium nitrate, again, this is still the conjugate base of a strong acid. And I've stated on here, the conjugate base of a strong acid does not affect the pH. And that's because the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. I'm going to look at some strong bases, and those are always going to be the metal hydroxides, column 1 and the heavier column 2 metals with hydroxide form a strong base. So anything that's ionic, a metal, non-metal compound, would be a solid. If we dissolve this in water, this is completely soluble, and so a strong base leaves behind the hydroxide ion. And now what we're going to look at is the metal cation. So the sodium ion, technically we don't call it the conjugate acid of this base because the definition of a conjugate acid-base pair differ by an H+. But we call this sodium the metal cation of a strong base. So in a way, it's a conjugate, but we it doesn't fit the strict definition of the conjugate of a strong base. So we don't call it that. We call it the metal cation. So this is from a book that I'm not, I'm not using, but the metals of strong hydroxide bases also do not affect the pH.